40 years, Red Dawn, the PG-13 rating was created. This Soviet, uh, anti-Soviet propaganda 80s film. It really is a film of its time. I actually uh, enjoyed the rewatch, and it didn't feel um, as nostalgic as I thought it would. Rather, it actually felt pretty good and solid and rich, and basically this nice dramatic performances by these other characters that these actors that you know from other roles that are you know not kind of like this like Patrick Swayze obviously is more known for you know Ghost and Roadhouse and Dirty Dancing and C. Thomas Howell and um, obviously Charlie Sheen and things like that so this movie is so heavy um, around this concept of again the 80s the Cold War the Soviets Obviously, the, the threat of communism and socialism from Central South America, Cuba, the fact that they would actually invade America, take everyone by storm, take everyone by surprise, and it would be some local militias. In this case, it happens to be a few teens who grabbed some armaments, got out of Dodge, went to the woods, hold, hold up there long enough, and then kind of become the type of revolutionaries that made this country, the revolutionaries of of uh, the 1770s leading into uh, the Revolutionary War, this guerrilla warfare. Um, it is dark. It is um, edgy. It is um, still very interesting. Um, doesn't shy away from the horrors of what they were going for as far as the film goes. Like, this isn't some, you know, Oscar caliber film per se, but at the same time, the character growth and story arcs of all these different characters, obviously Jennifer Grey, Leah Thompson has a role in this film, they all have different places where they become breaking points. And obviously almost every character um, is is killed off. This is um, kind of a lot of commentary on, you know, the thirst for war, the actual threat manifesting itself. Are you prepared for not? How would you react? I mean, there are so many layers of this as well. And, I, and again, it does it does uh, kind of lend itself into that uh, great principle, which you love very much, the Stanton rule. As Harry Dean Stanton's in it, it's probably a pretty good movie. So this definitely fits that. So um, it, it kind of starts the way, you know, in our time, just this, you know, regular town, with the football team and, 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 and the kids. And then suddenly there's, uh, you know, an onslaught of uh, paratroopers that arrive. And, you know, even the teacher, no one knew, knows what to expect. I have to be honest, this was, I don't want to say, because it, it was 84 and I was in high, I was transitioning from middle school into high school. I don't know that I ever felt like we were afraid of an invasion per se. But the film, definitely over the course of the you know the four years of high school as the, the Cold War went on before the wall came down, you felt as though it, it was part of uh, that propaganda working. It's part of your disdain for those belief systems, even though you didn't may not even understood what they're trying to accomplish. It all it was them as just being bloodthirsty. I think it's just because they just did a good job of trying to deal with realism. You felt like you were in this in this place. Um, it's all very raw. Um, I don't. I I think that um, they they did they did a good job of um, setting up and executing the uncertainty of everything, not knowing what's going on, how to handle it, what to do, what are we going to do if the adults you know are killed off? Where is everybody? How to communicate? Like how to survive in the winter? There's Tons of those type of elements that work well in shows today. And this movie did it really, really well back then. I think that's why it holds up well. And, and again, this is that innocence, um, just just a random person. And just, you know, he's just getting taken. He'll get taken out as well. So they just do a really good job of all those things. Patrick Swayze was really trying to work on having some acting chops. He was, you know, really trying to kind of stretch beyond just being, you know, the good looking guy, sexiest man alive thing. That was a, a big deal. Obviously he did other movies. Uh, we, I mentioned Tu Wong Fu in a, in a video, obviously some of the other stuff we talk about, but um, he does a really good job in this movie. I, I have to be honest. I really, really 
Uh, really enjoyed that um, a lot. I thought he was really, and he is just heavily surprised. But I mean, Charlie Sheen is the brother. I think is great. See what see Thomas Howe um, is, is uh, Robert is is fantastic. Um, tons of characters that are also as well, and even uh, Powers Booth is sort of like the colonel that you know doesn't really quite know what to do, but joins forces, tries to lend a hand, things like that. So, um. It, it, the film also moves pretty well through some different scenarios. Like I said, storylines, um, taking care of adults, really dark themes, and there's Powers Booth, Powers Booth, and um, and this was this is when they start striking back Wolverines, right? So the Wolverine they're gonna start striking back with girl using Leah Thompson as a, as bait, as a trap, things like that. So. Um, it, it made you want to feel as though you could also be heroic. Like it was, it was that kind of thing. And look at it, it very graphic. Like this was, this was the kind of thing where they didn't want to go too far and make a rated R movie, but they also wanted to try to be a little edgier than a PG film. So this is why the PG 13 was sort of burnt born. And I'm kind of glad because it really allows a creator to kind of stretch their legs a little bit. I think it was done well over the course of years now i do feel like it's just an excuse for them to sort of like oh we're going to use one f-bomb and we're going to do whatever things like that so that's my general take on it i'd love to hear your guys's thoughts 40th anniversary thought i'd throw it out there enjoyed the rewatch and hear from you